Reference Log, Stardate 00462.4. We've been dispatched to the planet Sodania to transport the Ambassador and her entourage to Starbase 211 so that they may sign a treaty with the Federation and apply for membership. So, another new race to join the Federation? The race isn't new. The Federation first encountered the Sodanians 58 years ago. According to the contact team from the USS Hood, they maintain a matriarchal society and most members have the ability to distract other nearby races with their presence and beauty. Sounds convenient. Why didn't they join up? Did we contact them and just go away? They declined at the time. They were under frequent raid from another nearby race called the Corsarians, who would kidnap members for use as distractions against their own trading partners. As a result, the Sodanians were unwilling to trust any other sentient race, so... As you said, we contacted them and went away. So what's changed now? As tactical officer, you should have been in the briefing for this mission. I have the con. As rarely as I get that, I wanted time in the center seat. The briefing minutes are readily available. To summarize, the Sodanians have been able to build a defensive grid to prevent Corsarian raids and are now eager to end their people's isolation. They feel that Federation membership will allow them to make headway with making trading partners with other races, and perhaps lend the defense of new ally. So what's changed their minds then? A short period of stability, and they're suddenly willing to seek out interstellar trade? The Federation sent Ambassador Tarasta to represent us in recent territorial discussions. The Sodanians were so impressed with the Ambassador's ability to adapt and adhere to the limits of boundaries of the discussions that they voluntarily pressed her about membership. Uh, approaching Sedania, Captain. Slow to impulse, assume standard orbit. Hi, Captain. Slowing to impulse, assuming standard orbit. Thank you. Detecting a number of armed vessels locking onto our position. Their weapons are also locking on us. The ship's in attack formation. Negative, Captain. I'd say they're an armed escort. Their weapons or systems are powered up, but clearly on standby, we're not detecting any use of targeting scanners. I think they may even have a limited range of fire. Interesting planetary defense systems. I'm sure I've seen a similar matrix array before. I have too, but I can't seem to find an exact match in the tactical library. Open handling frequencies. Handling frequencies open, Captain. They are responding. Thank you. On screen. This is Captain Hamilton Prescott of the United Federation Starship Webster. Greetings to you, Captain Prescott. Welcome to Sidonia. I am Luminary Aristotle. Greetings, Luminary. We are here to escort your ambassador to Starbase 211 and await your instructions. Doyen Rizme and her entourage are waiting transport. I believe you've already received your list of special requirements for the ambassador and her staff. We have Luminary. Special quarters have been prepared and we've isolated a portion of an entire section for their comfort. Given our people's history, we appreciate your consideration. It has been a matter of our survival to ensure that we are not among more strangers than decorum dictates. My crew and I will avoid outnumbering your people whenever possible. We will be sending coordinates for your transportation. The defense system shields will be lowered in 15 of your minutes. Understood, and thank you. Webster out. Hawkins, uh, notify the transporter room. Full ambassadorial honors. St. James, communicate to Starbase 211 that we are preparing to beam over the diplomatic party. Dawson, with me. Time to put on the fancy clothes. Kiva, you have to come. Ready, Lieutenant Odell? Yes, Captain. We have the coordinates, and the shields are down now. Energize. Uh, 
On behalf of the United Federation of Planets, it is my honor to welcome you aboard, Ambassador Rizmi. Greetings from Sidonia and the Great Luminary. We are indebted to you for your service. It is our pleasure. May I introduce uh, my Chief Engineer, Lieutenant Commander Dawson, our Head of Security, Commander Hawkins, and I, we will all be escorting you to your quarters. Please do, but if there is time, we would love to tour the ship to see what kind of technology the Federation could share with us in the future. I'd be happy to show you around. We're quite proud of our Delia. She's top of the line. The Delia? A nickname. An informal name. For the ship, Delia Webster was a woman of renown from Earth's history. She was known as the Petticoat Abolitionist. An excellent means of honoring her. You are the Chief of Security? And Executive Officer. Captain's Log Supplemental. Now that our guests are aboard, the Webster is leaving orbit for Starbase 211. We expect an uneventful trip. Meanwhile, my senior officers and I are giving the Sodanians a tour of the less sensitive area of our starship. This is all very lovely, but does the Delia have an adequate defense system? Yes, Ambassador, I assure you the Delia's defense system is more than adequate. You see, many years ago, our people were hunted and forced to use our gifts against other peoples to assist the Corsarians. We still bear scars from those times. So you developed the planetary defense grid? Uh, yes, it was to protect our people. It's only recently we've begun to seek out allies and trade relations. To many of our people, however, space seems too dangerous, and they would prefer we rely on the resources we have at hand. Luminary air still might feel differently. Interstellar relations would only increase our wealth and technology. We understand. We wish you luck in the future, then, and we'll keep you safe on this journey. Red alert, red alert, all hands to battle stations. Kiva, report! Two destroyers have dropped out of warp and opened fire. It looks like the Corsarians. Shields are up and weapons are online. Wire coordinates, walk on and return fire. Get it. Alright, Captain, returning fire. I was in sick bay when we took that hit. Is everybody alright? We're going to tour engineering. Well, now we can all tour sick bay. Speak to quarters, sir. No. Hawk, I need you down in auxiliary control. Just keep my eye things. All right, sir. My assistant can go to your sick bay. I need to go to the bridge to see our attackers. I can tell you how they fight. That would be best. Ma'am, you're bleeding from that hit, and don't you think it would be better if you stayed out of sight? Especially if they're after you and your people. Dr. Zephyr, Dawson, get these two to sick bay. I'll be on the bridge. Understood, sir. Report. Two Corsarian destroyers dropped out of warp with phasers firing. I believe they expected our shields to remain down after transport or for us to rely on retreat to the Sodanian defense system. The Sodanian honor guard stopped following us when we left their solar system. They hit the warp drive with something that's put them in flux for the moment. Port thrusters are offline. Impulse engines are operating at reduced power. The weapons impacted here and here. Shields are still intact. Phasers and photon torpedoes are still operational. We return fire as per your orders. Thank you. Open hailing frequencies. They are responding, sir. On screen. This is Captain Rauman of the Corsarian assault ship Sarla. We have stunted your warp drive and will proceed to destroy your ship unless you hand over the Doyen and her party. Well, we'll be turning over anyone to you, Captain Rome. We don't recognize your authority in this sector. Now, why did you fire on us? The Sodoyans are under our protection. Not according to Sodanians. <laughs> Firing on a Starfleet vessel won't win you any new friends in the Federation either. We won't let you take our place. Fire again. Target the shields and the weapons. Basic maneuvers, return fire, target their engines and weapons. I do not believe they intend to destroy us. Their tactics thus far seem focused on removing our ability to fight or escape, though they are ill-equipped for boarding parties. They're also intensely outmatched once we've got power back. It might be a mercy to end this quickly. 
Their technology and design looks familiar. A lot like the defense system for the planet. Interesting. There are striking similarities. Zephyr to bridge. The Doyen is en route. Says she needs to talk to the captain right now. We're a little busy at the moment. More power to phasers. More power to phasers. It's crucial that I speak to the captain face to face with you. Yes. Man, you cannot be here. Captain Prescott, we must be sure you're here. And you're you are not driving them for a while. I will take you to the ambassador. Shh. 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 Captain, I believe it would be best if we ended this engagement quickly. Are we up and running? Power is restored. We can make this quick and painless. Fire it well. Outstanding work. This is auxiliary control, where we control every function of the ship. You don't need that, Commander. I saw what you did to Dawson. So, diplomatically, shut up. Get stuck to the wall over there. Don't look at me. Dawson. Now, do as I say, or we'll have a diplomatic incident on our hands, and you'll wind up with the father of all headaches. Lieutenant Yakamoto, bring a pair of restraints up here. And a blindfold. Beg pardon, sir. A blindfold? Just do it. The hailing it, sir. On screen. <laughs> We surrender. You've crippled us. Regrettable, but necessary. What will happen to us now? Patch yourself up, and I'd suggest leaving before you drift into their defensive grid. No, I mean, what will happen to us if you become the favorites of the Sedoyans? For 50 years, we provided them with everything we could give at their request. When we met them, they had nothing. But now we've restructured most of our trade and technology to support and advance their needs. They didn't even have warp until they asked us to give them our ships. This is a very different history than what has been suggested to us. I imagine their official story is close to what we were told. They needed protectors and they needed the means to protect themselves. <laughs> It's hard to resist their suggestions when they seem so reasonable. Be careful, Captain. Soon you'll be fighting even more of their battles. Lieutenant St. James, can you please hail Dr. Zephyr? Hi, Captain. Sick Bay, Zephyr here. Doctor, why did you let the Doyen come to the bridge? Um, she asked. I guess it seemed reasonable at the time. Where's the Doyen now? She's here recovering. I'm told she had an altercation with Lieutenant St. James and was incapacitated as a result. If it helps to know, I had the strangest inclination to take them on a tour of engineering as asked, even while we were taking fire. It was the strangest notion. Looks like some are more easily swayed than others. These people could be a grave threat to the galaxy. Hyperbole, but not inaccurate. So what do we do with them? Your application to the United Federation of Plants is hereby summarily rejected on the grounds that you applied under false pretenses. 
Your people attempted to influence my crew and endanger them and this ship in combat. Further, you did not disclose the extent of your abilities nor display ethical restraint in using them against others. Pursuant to the Interstellar Accords, your ambassadorial party will be returned to you immediately. Captain, I'm filing a protest with Ambassador Tirasta immediately. Please do. She's already been sent my report on this matter and has acknowledged reading it. I'm sure she'll advise you on how telepathically manipulating another being into performing actions against their will is considered a felony under interstellar law, punishable by rather harsh measures on several planets. This is simply proof that you are not ready for relations with other worlds. Captain, can I get you to reconsider? Absolutely not. But I've no doubt you try. <laughs> not bad, Captain. On that note, we have a ship to run.